What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Cork to Glory, this is episode number 44. And can I just say real briefly as well, we've just started season 5, got out of the summer transfer window, and this is episode number 44. It is pretty mind blowing to me like how quickly we're getting through this save and also it's at a similar pace to the QPR PS5 career mode I did earlier on this FIFA year. Um, you know, obviously the, the, the former me, if you will, my old saves, like 44 episodes by now I'll be like midway through season 2, perhaps coming towards the end of season 2, but to be instead out of the summer transfer window and beginning September here in season five, a League Two side now in the Premier League. Yeah, I've, I've really improved the uh, the pace of the way I'm doing my saves in this year's FIFA. And I have to say as well, I really do feel as though it's so much better this way as well. It takes an awful lot of time, as you can imagine, to play through the save at this pace, make the videos, upload them, and be as consistent as I'm trying to be. But Believe me, it's worth every, every, every single late night, early morning, whatever. I just, I love this save to pieces. I love the pace we're playing through this save. It was the same on my QPR save. And I, I would like to keep on doing all my career mode saves at this pace. I think it's really, really good. And it flows really nicely as well. What wasn't flowing really nicely, and what wasn't good though, is when I was playing this game against Brighton here, away from home on the south coast. Our first game out of Southampton on the back of our first Premier League victory, the 2-0 went at home to Fulham in the final game of August. We were 2-0 down in the first start. We had a goal disallowed through Leo Yates, causing problems from corners, as he likes to do, uh, and we went two goals down. The second goal, very frustrating indeed. Did get back in the game, and half the deficit in the second half through Samuel Belber getting his third goal in two. Looking for a late response and battling back from two goals down to claim a crucial point against Graham Potter side who of course two years ago won the championship title in our first season in the second tier and Brighton now looking to establish themselves once again as a, a secure Premier League side found a goal right towards the end of the game to extend their lead back up to two restore the two goal Christian and win the game by three goals to one so second defeat of the season after defeat on the opening day they're going away to the south coast against Brighton and I remember those those, those uh, games against them two years ago in the championship they were so good then they were just too good for the championship that season and I think that's pretty clear now um, regardless as you would have seen we have sold McGlade yes after this goal is draw here against Aston Villa spoilers and we have sold McGlade he's going to Portsmouth if there's anywhere for McGlade to go I'm glad he's going to Fratton Park man that's that's really cool I'm actually really happy in negotiating that sale there because you know McGlade and Galvin were going to go at some point this season McGlade has agreed to leave I'll try and give him like a, a testimonial farewell game before the January transfer window opens and it looks like Galvin is going to go as well. And also for the third game of today's episode 7, uh, taking on Aston Villa away at Villa Park. I know you're thinking, hang on a minute, you just faced him, didn't you? But yeah, that was in the league. This was in the Carabao Cup. And of course, after our victory against Sheffield Wednesday in the Carabao Cup second round, I think I briefly touched on it after the victory and said something like, this could be the year when we have a run in the Carabao Cup for the first time in a save. No, it's not. <laughs> no, it's not. We got beat by two goals to nil in the third round of Villa Park. Fine. Totally, totally fine. Don't mind one bit. Again, as I said before, like I'll never, I'll never throw the games or simulate the games. Um, I try and play every game. And practically always do in every save I do play every single competitive game. But um, yeah, it's to me again the Carabao Cup. It's like if we get through good, if we don't, I'm not asked at all. Oh, sorry, I should have said not bothered at all. But yeah, we're out of the Carabao Cup third round. That's totally fine with me because I'm way more focused in securing Premier League football for next season and getting back to winning ways. And so for our fourth game of today's episode here, Brentford away from home. This is going to be a massive one right now with the bees towards the bottom of the table. And I believe if we are to survive this year these are the games we need to target wins in and make sure we beat the teams that are below us in the table we had a bit of a goal line scramble early on as Brentford thought they'd scored thankfully after a goal decision system the goal was not given and 15 minutes in we took the lead as well yes didn't score in his first three games but now Samuel Bell Bell gets his fourth of the year already and after 40 goals he scored last season the championship I can't see him repeating that this season but you know what if he can get us 20 goals this year that's that's a tall order if he can get us 20 goals this year, I'll be more than satisfied with that. 40 minutes into the game, we would double our lead as well. Barry Sharkey storming down the left-hand side. And a brilliant driving run from the captain there. Rolls it across the face of the goal. And Eamon, the real deal, Cunningham tucks home to make it 2-0. As we hold a very good and comfortable lead heading into the break. Whilst Brentford would get back in the game here, 51 minutes in. Bit of a scramble of a goal there. Zamborek gives Brentford the bees a glimmer of hope. 10 minutes on the clock, looking for the goal to restore our two-goal cushion 
possession and surely wrap the three points up. Luke Byrne finds Rory Keenan. Lovely drag back to beat his man here. Holds onto the ball well. Cuts it across and Tommy Healy bangs in his first of the campaign to restore our two goal cushion. Give us the 3-1 lead and hold on to the big, big victory away in London. Again, that's going to be the key for us this season. If we are to survive and survive comfortably, we've got to make sure we beat the teams that I would say we've got more quality than so we can keep our heads way above the drop zone. So seven games in, as you can see, 11th place right now, you know, eight points on the board, sorry, nine points on the board even, and already two wins as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy with this start to the season. I said at the very beginning of the campaign, I think we've got more than enough quality to avoid the drop zone. I see there are teams in this division that I'm pretty confident that we've got a better side than, and of course we're the youngest team in the division, with the vast majority of our players still being teenagers or in their early 20s. So... I feel very confident we can avoid a drop this season. And I said to start the campaign, 11th to 14th, that's where I'm targeting, and that's where we are right now. So yeah, it's been a decent start for Cork City, and, and long may it continue. You know, again, only two wins in our first seven games, but to already be 11th, in 11th place right now, you know, at the start of the season, if you had offered that to me at the end of the campaign, I would have bitten your hand off. So right now, we're doing exactly what we need to do. So following that, we had a scouting update in the academy update. This was the 1st of October. As you can see, I'm uh, going to retrain uh, Ulrike Christensen a central midfielder by trade to the right wing. He's got not much pace, but I think he would be better suited to playing on the wings. We should see a little overall boost there for the Scandinavian. And for the fifth game of today's episode, our second big test of the season, Spurs coming to take us on. Of course, we faced them back in Season 2 in the FA Cup round of 16, where we were beaten pretty comfortably uh, by Jose Mourinho's side, of course. But how different things are now. Taking the one here at Turner's Cross on the back of the win against Brentford, I felt pretty confident, and whilst Nicolo Zaniolo would fire in the goal for Spurs to give him the lead, we were in the game for the entire match. With three minutes to go, Harry Kane storms through one-on-one, -on -one, but Big Leo makes an incredible last-ditch tackle to keep us only trailing by one. I never gave up. I believed we could find a leveller at some point, and as Barry Sharkey plays a lovely ball through to Troy Parrott, the former Spurs man, he outpaces Mbabu, goes for goal, and drills it in at the near post, and wouldn't you just know it, with one minute of stoppage time to play we find a leveler against Mourinho's men and the guy that gets the goal his second of the season already Troy the boy 27 million to bring him back to the Premier League after he went to Bayern Munich what a big signing that could prove to be. And we are going to retrain him to be a left winger at some point. Because again, I do believe he can thrive as an inside forward in this team. And there you see exactly why. Stepping in from the left, he's got the pace, he's got the dribbling, and he's got the finishing ability as well. Troy the boy Parrot against his former team. Couldn't help himself. Couldn't help himself. I had no time to react and do the L1 double circle to show respect, celebration. No, couldn't help himself. Just goes absolutely ballistic as we all did. 1-1 the final score. And twice this season, we've taken a one to traditional top six. Chelsea and Spurs at Turner's Cross and we found late levellers through Troy Parrott. Not quite as clutch as Callum Wilson just yet, but either way, maybe a sign of things to come. Hashtag docs references. Um, anyway, for the final games, these episode, I think, uh, we take on Arsenal here away at the Emirates Stadium, so another North London side this time coming away from home, taking on the Gunners here. Um, fell behind early and then this was incredibly, incredibly frustrating. Arsenal from this free kick, Lucas Acampos makes it 2-0 on the stroke of the hour mark, but I thought this was a really bad decision by the referee, man. I thought Jamie Bowden made an incredible last-ditch tackle. The referee gave a free kick right on the edge and booked Jamie as well. I thought that was a really poor decision, personally. I think that definitely shouldn't have been a free kick there. But regardless, sometimes you just don't get those decisions. Got to hold your hands up and accept that's how luck works. Sometimes it goes in your favour, sometimes it doesn't. Didn't really change the game, though, regardless. We were still losing and didn't play very well. It's 2 the final score. Arsenal get the win. And yeah, the final game of today's episode there. there that's the rest of the reason I was confused there, because the final game had nothing to report. The final game uh, of today's episode was a goalless draw away at Goodison Park against Carlo and Charlotte's Everton. So yeah, despite the defeat to Arsenal there... It has been a really decent start for Cork City as we end today's episode off with a scouting update and an academy update as well as a new change of position of Christensen in our academy as well. Yeah, it has been a really decent start. Only two wins in our first 10 games. That doesn't sound great, but to be in 12th place, as you'll see in just a moment's time at the league table to end today's episode off after our first 10 games, about a quarter way through the season, I would have taken that to start the campaign. No doubt about it. 
We've already had big points again against Spurs and Chelsea. And yeah, I'm, I'm feeling pretty confident and encouraged by the start we've made to our first season in the Premier League. There's a long way to go and anything can happen. Of course, you know, at some point we'll probably go into a horrendous patch of form because that almost always happens to me at some point during the season. But for now, 12th place in the table, I'll take that every day of the week. But I won't say this was the quarter glory, guys. We found your fortune. Hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, then please do drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day and I'll see you for the next episode of Court to glory featuring our first game against Liverpool in the Premier League as well very soon